contact of the anterior teeth in maxima intercuspation the lower incisor they contact the lingual incline of the upper incisors forming the vertical overlap which is called as the overbite and the horizontal overlap which is called as the overture because of this typical feature incisors they are best suited for shearing the food now we have some rules of contact between the maxillary and the mandibular teeth maxillary teeth it contacts a tooth having the same name of the opposite arch for example if we take maxillary central incisor this tooth it will contact mandibular central incisor it will contact the tooth having the same name on the mandible plus one tooth distal to it the tooth that is distal to it we have here mandible lateral incisor but when we talk about mandibular tooth we take this mandibular tooth we take mandibular lateral incisor mandibular lateral incisor will contact the tooth having the same name the same name is maxillary lateral incisor and one tooth mesial to it that is maxillary central incisors this is how the teeth will contact as a rule but if we see maxillary third molars as a rule they are supposed to contact the same name tooth of the mandible plus one tooth distal to it so it is contacting mandibular third molar but what is the tooth distal to it there is no tooth distal to it that is why it has only one antagonist so you have maxillary third molar that have one antagonist same scenario is there with mandibular central incisor if you see mandibular central incisor they contact with maxillary central incisor but they do not have any opposite tooth to contact because what we have here is a midline so two teeth that have only one antagonist are maxillary third molars and mandibular central incisor maxillary canine if we take maxillary canine so this is your maxillary canine It contacts with mandibular canine and mandibular premolars. Now, mandibular canine forms a part of anterior teeth, while mandibular premolar is posterior teeth. So, maxillary canine will contact both anterior and posterior segment of the mandibular arch. While if you talk about mandibular first premolar, this is our mandibular first premolar, it will contact maxillary canine and maxillary first premolar maxillary canine forms a part of anterior arch maxillary premolar forms a part of posterior arch so mandibular first premolar will contact the anterior arch as well as the posterior arch we'll be talking about functional contacting movement how the teeth of one jaw contact the teeth of other jaw when the jaw is moving for that we need to keep in mind two concepts that is the first concept the side to which the mandible moves is the working side when we are talking about the functional contact movement contacting movement please concentrate and try to make the movements which we are studying onto your own jaw while we are studying it so the concept says the side to which the mandible moves is your working side so while making interpretation remember that maxillary teeth are stationary it's only the mandible which is moving in this diagram we'll be seeing the protrusive contact movement when we say protrusion what is happening mandible is moving forward that is protrusion when the mandible moves forward if we have maxillary teeth drawn here this mandible is moving forward so it will make forward arrows on the maxillary teeth so if you see it here this is how your mandible will rub onto your maxillary teeth so what this diagram shows us it shows the maxillary teeth with mandibular cusp pathways traced on it during the protrusive contact so we do get these diagrams and what we are supposed to tell is what this path indicates now how do we identify the maxillary teeth and mandibular teeth typically when we get this diagram we get this mesial concavity that depicts the maxillary teeth and if you see the occlusal cusp here you know what we what is drawn here is the oblique ridge 
that is how we can identify the vaccine when we talk about the mandibular teeth in the protrusive movement when the mandible is moving forward relatively the maxilla will move backward that doesn't mean that maxilla moves it is just a relative motion the relative motion creates the backward arrows that show the path of maxilla on the mandibular teeth so these backward arrows they show the path of maxillary teeth on the mandibular teeth what is exactly happening is mandible is moving in this direction so if we try if we just happen to put up pencils on mandible mandibular teeth they would draw an arrow that points in front and similarly if we put pencils on maxillary teeth in the same motion these pencil will draw backward arrows on the mandibular teeth that is what this diagram would show we'll be tracing similar movement now in the lateral contact now as we apply the rule to the side to which the mandible moves is your working side now in this scenario if your mandible moves towards this side this will be your working side teeth will move towards this side now if you put pencils on the mandible teeth they are moving this way so what kind of an arrow they'll create on the maxillary teeth what kind of a mark they will create the mark that moves buccally so this is the mark that is created the buccal side mark is created on your maxillary teeth with mandibular cusp in a working movement so this is the working side in the working side what kind of a mark will be created on the mandibular teeth if we had pencils fixed onto the maxillary teeth since mandible is moving this side maxilla will be relatively moving this side so what kind of an arrow it will create it will create this lingually directed arrows that depict the path of the maxilla on the mandibular teeth please try to mimic this movement in your own oral cavity and try to imagine how the maxillary teeth rub onto your mandibular teeth and vice versa now the same thing we'll be seeing we have been talking about the working side contact when the mandible moves this side so this is the working side contact when the mandible is moving this side and we have to trace the motion on this side this is the non working side or the balancing side the balancing side what happens is just keep your fingers onto your tmj that is just anterior to your ear and try to move the mandible on your right side as in the diagram you will notice that your right side condyle rotates while your left side condyle will translate so if we have condyle this is your right side condyle and this is your left side condyle what happens if the mandible moves towards the side this condyle just rotates on a vertical axis but this condyle that is the balancing side condyle it moves in front because of this movement the path that is traced by this these teeth on the maxilla would be they would be coming not only towards the side they would go lingually inwards and forwards that is how we get the path here that is palatally that is inwards and forwards exactly opposite path will be created by the maxillary teeth on to the mandible that is a relative path so we had seen the progressive movement we have seen the lateral movement on the working side and the non working side now we see the lateral protrusive movement lateral protrusive movement is moving the mandible laterally as well as forward when we are moving the mandible laterally and forward that is in this direction what we get is it will create outward and forward arrows on the maxillary teeth because this is the motion this is the motion of the mandible so it will create buccal and forward outwards and forward arrows on the maxillary teeth the maxillary teeth will create just the opposite arrows on the 